I have a confession to make. I didn't want to have to say this because it's kind of awkward and uncomfortable. But you know, transparency is important. Yeah, so this morning, probably around, I don't know, 10.30 a.m., I had instant coffee. <laughs> Yeah, and it wasn't that bad. Like, I kind of enjoyed it. Got off to a little bit of a late start today, but there's a few things I want to talk about, I want to show you, I want to teach you with regards to photography, and there's a few things I need to do here at the studio. Also, I've been practicing my card skills. If you didn't notice from the intro, I just literally kind of spend like 20 minutes a day. Quarantine's doing weird things to us all. <laughs> Pizza magician again, what? <sighs> These, um, I've been sitting on Apple boxes since we moved in. And you know what, since quarantine happened and I'm the only one here, and I, I haven't been using this office as I should be. Take this room for example, okay? So this room right here, this view right here with all these cool cameras, this, this is my personal office. Like this is where I'm supposed to be sitting, editing, making videos, taking calls, you know what I mean? I got the glass window I can see out, etc. And we got this really cool backdrop. Like, like look at all these awesome cameras behind me. It looks, I mean, it looks great. The thing is, I just haven't been using this office at all. So since I'm the only one here now, I've been setting up my laptop in the front room where we shoot all the main angle things. And I've just been hanging out there all day. Maybe it's the sunlight, it's the fact that I can be distracted and watch the road and all the cars but it just feels more like a space I wanna hang out in. Kind of like when people come over to your house and everyone hangs out in the kitchen. This room, like I haven't used this room once. So I think what would be cool is if I actually moved this room into this main area and then we turned this room into a set. Somewhere where we can film main angles and have like a secondary dope spot with lights and cameras and everything's rigged up, ready to go. So we can just walk in there, lights, camera, action, instead of it just being an empty room right now that nobody's using. I think I'm just gonna start moving things and then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Basically, there needs to be motivation for what I'm doing in this office. There needs to be motivation to move that desk here, just like there needs to be motivation in your photography and everything that you do. Not motivation to like, hey, get up and get after it, but motivation to make your ideas make sense. The idea is the what, the motivation is the why. And we'll get into it in a second when I take some flat lay photos and kind of show you guys a little more detail about how I've been doing that lately. lot like looks a lot more polished already that's the one bummer about like dialing in a space and getting lights mounted on the roof and mics and overhead cameras and stuff and then you switch one thing one small thing like a desk that's a different height and suddenly everything needs to be adjusted the lights need to be tweaked the mic and everything but it's good to do that because uh, I need to switch these lights out anyway and there's a lot of changes that I want to make as is to this current setup so no time like the present but Let's dive into the topic of today's video, which is having motivation behind the things that you do in your photos. Just took a quick demo of me doing a flat lay for like how I would set up an Instagram photo. So something that I want to photograph, thought process, what I'm gonna do. You know, it's gonna be brief, but I think you'll get something and I think you'll walk away with like at least an interesting thought. Also, did you like the random B-roll of my camera here? What's the significance to this? Why is it at zero, nothing? Just the fact that it looks cool. And it matches this dope print up here, which is special to me. So, I just thought like it works. Not even the same camera, but it's close enough and it looks sick. Look at this angle though, this is like, come on, this is ridiculous. 
looks so, why don't I use this all the time? What is wrong with me? Well, hang on. There. Got those on in the background now. We're looking tasty, crispy. Okay, Peter, what do you mean by having motivation to do certain things within your photos? Let's take some dust particles, for example. This was one of the most recent things I was talking to another photographer friend of mine, Sam, about. Really wanted to put some dust particles in a photo because I thought this would enhance it, this would make it look cool, and you guys know I love Photoshop and doing just random things. The problem is you can't just toss dust particles into a photo. What is the motivation to do that? Well, if you had a beam of light shining in, that would give motivation for dust particles. Now it makes sense. So I took a flat lay the other day of this particular pocket knife that I got the other day in the vlog from Benchmade, which you saw, and I took this shot here. Now this is what the reality of it looked like. This side, Instagram. So whenever you see a photo posted on Instagram and it looks picture perfect and everyone's life looks amazing and the props and the lighting, you just think, wow, that is just, it's so good. That's what it actually looks like. And when you see the raw version of it, it's not very impressive. It's literally a bunch of garbage on a desk and like a muddy boot. There's a muddy boot on the desk. That's reality. You see Instagram, it's crafted, it's edited, it's manipulated, it's just dust particles, everything looks just right and that is what's presented to you. Now that's twofold. It's a good and it's bad. It's a bit of a false representation of life and just products in general, but that's advertising. That's how things are sold. And when it comes to products and certain types of photography, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I wanted to show you the before and the after, because there's a lot of people I think that can be inspired by seeing something so basic, look so extravagant and think, I can do that too, because you, you, you absolutely can do that too. Now, why am I bringing up this knife and this boot and this reality versus Instagram thing? Because it's all, it's all connected, okay? It's all encompassed into what it is that we do as content creators online. Pete, you're using a lot of words. I know, just wait, bear with me. The motivation for having a boot on the desk was because this particular product has a tactical, hard use, hard work feel to it. So having riding gloves and a muddy boot supports the theme of the photo. There's context there for it. There's motivation there for it. That's why it works. Instead of it just being super random, making zero sense, confusing everybody. I feel like those tiny details are what separate amateurs and professionals. And I've been on both sides of the spectrum. Complete noob, amateur, professional, lost in the middle. That is the journey of a photographer. Also that whole like side rant of Instagram versus reality. It kind of fits into this. I might've just started rambling, but it makes sense. And I'm gonna leave it in here because it's, you know, it's true and it's helpful to me as well. So I'm looking for some props, some things that I can use to make this photo, this flat lay of this here pocket knife a little more interesting. So it's black, it's tactical, it's slim. Gotta find some props that work and I need motivation for those props to make sense. Example. This does not make sense as a prop. Does it look cool in a photo? Yes, doesn't make sense. This makes sense. It's got a kind of tactical feel, like it could be like a rail sight. So that, right there, that would work. Okay. The fact that I can still cross my legs is a miracle. We got some cord. We have a cheese plate. We have a holster. We have a grid from an Aperture 120D. Cause it looks, what does it look like? Kind of like some military, Camo. I pretend like I know what I'm talking about. And then we have oh, an ammo crate. These are ammo crates we're sending out soon with a bunch of our stuff packed in it. I think it might be cool to empty the crate and shoot down into it with this stuff kind of spilling over the sides. That's the plan. Remember I'm always telling you guys about texture? How sick is that? I'm gonna set this up near the window because there's more natural light there. All right, so that is the plan right there to shoot down inside. And we'll drape some props around to kind of dress it up and, and yeah. All right, this is hard to film and do at the same time, but what I've used that little play for is a little trick of mine when I do flat lays. I'll show you here as an example, that's way clearer. So instead of just shooting a flat lay photo straight down with stuff kind of in and around and wherever, and you've got all your 
everything is looking pretty cool and there you go, you've got like your little setup. Sometimes what I like to do to make the item that we're focusing on stand out more is elevate it off the surface slightly. So in order to do that, you just gotta find something that works to basically lift it up. So in this instance, this little cheese plate here is the perfect size to come in on top and just balance this knife on. So now when I'm looking top down, it's just gonna pop that off the background, giving a slight depth of field to these items, right? So it's just gonna make this stand out more. Okay, so my little uh, sniper net, ghillie suit, whatever. Doesn't really work since I'm shooting inside. I went with the little bolts that actually held the top to this box down because I thought those little bits looked cool. Okay, backup items, a wider cheese plate, uh, and I found some springs. And I thought this paper might actually work pretty cool too to add texture. All right, so these springs look kind of industrial. All right, so there it is is what we're looking at. I'm losing light, so I'm gonna have to do this quickly. So give me one second and you'll see the picture in three, two, one. Okay, we are, uh, we are all finished. I made a little bit, I made a little bit of a mess. There's kind of just odds and ends everywhere. I think those photos turned out great. It represents the knife very well in my opinion. It looks cool. But going back to what I said at the beginning about Instagram versus reality, if you were to just see that picture straight off, you'd think, sick. If I could only do a flat lay like that one day. And that's also me assuming you like what I did. I like it. And if you did too, you might think, wow, how did, like, I wish I could do that. That is it. Like, that is the reality of the situation here. Putting a bunch of random things in a box, snapping a photo. It's just remembering the motivation for those things that are in the box. Like if there was a bottle of Purell in there, it, it wouldn't make sense. So having motivation for the items that are in the flat lay or your photography and just what you're doing in general. Does what you're doing have purpose? The idea is the what, the motivation is the why. This looks so much better. I'm really happy with that. All right, that might've been a bit of a random video, a bit of a random vlog tutorial kind of, but I wanted to take that photo today and I kind of just wanted you to come along on the raw experience and, and see what I see when I'm taking photos for Instagram. No matter if it's for Peter McKinnon's Instagram account or Pete's Pirate Life Instagram account. That's kind of the thought process, that's what I do. And I wanted to bring you along for the journey. So if you made it this far, <laughs> you are a champ. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I hope you're safe. Hit the like button if you like this video, it helps. Subscribe if you aren't already. Hit the bell for notifications for future videos. And, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.